Don't try to sneak into your room like that. I know what you've got behind your back. Records. More no records. This place is enormous. You have no idea how big this place is. It goes all the way down, all the way down. Music Hall, the official turntable of United Record Pressing. to follow something similar. We don't wear all the Buffon stuff. Could and you speak your name into the, just so I Yeah, know. Matt Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y. Thank you. And so we try to treat this like it's a classroom, you know, class 1000. Obviously, we're not wearing the booties and so on. Like a semi-clean room. Yeah, semi-clean sure. room. Because I always tell people records are mostly pressed in dirty rooms, essentially. And we, well, we this part has to be clean. Yeah, we, we try to make sure because any small defects on the stampers obviously translates over into the, sure. into the you know, replicated so yep. yeah. you'll see when we get to the dry set, and I mentioned this on the panel too, um, working together uh, you know, with some of the vendors that Matt had worked with, we have a lot of the dry side finishing equipment that was again built for uh, you know DVD and Blu-ray and you know formats that require much right. much higher precision. Right. And now we've translated that technology down to apply to vinyl. So again, more consistency, higher quality. Uh, the other thing that uh, for years. When they went to center punch the stampers, which then locates them on the press, sure. um, the old punches are using up half the spec. So there are three lines out, four lines out, whatever. In Blu-ray, we couldn't be more than 10 microns, which is like one one-hundredth or even less than that of the spec sure. limit. So we're using the old technology from Blu-ray to center the stampers, to punch them, and then make a perfect center hole. So now the data content is concentric to the hole. To the Excellent. And so, But now the important thing is to make sure there's no slippage of the stamper in the In the, in the hole itself, yeah. that's correct. And then we do check, um, let's say, out of center, out around eccentricity, concentricity, yeah. however you want to look at it. Um, we're half of what we were before based on the new technology. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah that's so we're like two, really three lines, not, you know, at the spec level. The building one is the receipt and store of components, whether it's raw materials that we're purchasing or customer furnished items. Building two is where we start to create and make the what we call the finished disc itself, that's the album, and then we start to bring all the components together and we start kitting the finished good. And then in building three is where the finished goods get essentially assembled and then we do the pack out and ship. Um, building three, however, is also now where the new um, expansion is and we start to do some of the pressing in there as well we needed that room in that space yeah so we, we kind of have a horseshoe configuration now a better flow process in one end kind of the middle for the product creation and then the assembly and then on the other end it's the ship what's that machine or is that, is that a dryer yeah so a we, label dryer yeah, yeah. during covid uh, we tried to take as much time as we could we were fortunately deemed essential uh, we did distribution services and, and whatnot yeah uh, we built a this is our print shop area we take artwork um, labels that are essentially 12 to a, to a sheet and we cut those down we die cut them and then since they're paper product with ink we have to then bake them Sure. and then drive off the moisture and so on. Yep. In building two and building three, we temperature humidity control both of those areas. So after they get baked into the hot ovens, then they go into the to the warm ovens and they stay there to keep them dry and keep them humidity free. Yeah. These are all things that people who don't, have never done a pressing plate tour, don't, don't even imagine. Oh, you get a label, you stick it on there and you're done. They don't. If you stick it on the press, um, you know, it's, it's basically physics. So as you, you know, it's not like you glue them on, right? Right. Um, that humidity then starts to flash off because it's so hot yeah. and yep. then the labels want to stick and tear. So yep. yeah, we have to really watch that. Yep. Right now is very hard. Um, one of the lessons I learned when I was at Sony is when the Fukushima Daiichi, you know, meltdown and all that occurred in Japan, we, we had one vendor, maybe two vendors. We have to have multiple because of the supply chain issues. We sure. recognized that two years ago, and so very quickly we started working with, uh, we have to be a good supply chain partner. 
we started working with multiple vendors and yeah. then we qualified them and so on. So And you have different uh, pressing nodes for each pellet type that they, they, they melt differently? We, we they, do, because, so you, right, depending on the vendor and then also depending on the stabilizers and so on, some react softer than others and yes. then they require us to run them at a lower temperature or different or, melt right. characteristics, different yeah. flow characteristics. Yeah. So every time we, we identify a vendor that we think is going to be a, a quality vendor, then we have to go through a qualification process here with you know, small quantity, medium quantity, large quantity, yeah. and, and, and religiously sort of track how this stuff performs relative to, to spec. And then once qualified, then we can introduce them to our And then chain. opaques and translucents and black, they all react oh, a little bit differently. Yeah. 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 I, I went before Neotech, there was Thai plastics. Yeah. I visited them. That was an interesting trip. Yeah, so the copolymer only comes from like two locations in the world, yeah. and then depending on if you're getting it from Europe or you're getting it from Thailand, whatever, um, they're going to be using different ports and so on. So from our logistic perspective, we have to have multiple. We have to be bringing them Absolutely. in from different Get ways. Yep. And again, the copolymer really is the same, but it's the subsequent raw material additives, the stabilizers, yep. uh, and a lot of it's proprietary too to the vendor. So yeah, um, we have to be very cautious of that. But to Mark's point, we also have to make sure we've got enough supply coming in. And as we grow, we have to be a better supply chain partner, too, to be able to adequately um, supply our presses and supply, you know, what we need. Uh, we're bringing in raw materials constantly, every day. These are our staging areas for uh, the production, the sleeves, the jackets. They'll bring them here. We've got some flow racks, too, that we've added. And then uh, this is brought over into our assembly, which is what you're going to see next. And so we stage it very closely to that process. And this all gets shipped to you from, from the, the people that make the paper the printers. Like yeah, stuff. So, mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This comes by truck? Yeah, every day we receive many truckloads of print material. And these are, these are metal job, These are all job folders, so every time we run a job, we'll, we'll save the reference test pressing, uh, a set of stampers, all of the reference artwork, and it gets cataloged and put into our ER, ERP system. So when there's a reorder for a catalog title, you can easily pull it, and you've got all the references. And do you, do you save metal, do you save stampers and metal parts? We'll, we'll, we'll save a, 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 you know, a set of stampers. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we'll save stampers as long as they um, haven't been pressed or they're uh, in still good shape. And then on the far half is uh, label components. So the labels that have been cut and so on for future orders. Right. I believe this actually... Okay, so now we're going into... This, this is building two. Now we're walking into building two. Which is, this, this, is, this is heavy duty fly paper? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, because this is temperature humidity controlled, it helps to kind of keep some of that segregated. Right. So this is our assembly area. We're right at shift change. Um, so we're bringing the press records out to here. We do have audio QC that comes out. We do have inspection at each of the tables for 100% visual. Um, but what they'll do here is they'll take... You want to be careful not to get any titles. Oh, okay, no, no. customers are super sensitive okay. about that. Sorry. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, so what they'll do is they'll be sleeved, and then they're here. Um, we'll do the final assembly here with all of the components, and then we take them to building three where they're packed out and shipped. The grand design for the plant, the way we were set up before we decided to expand uh, with, with more, more press capacity, is you, you, you have, uh, you're, you're staging your components, you're kitting your components, you're pressing records, and then it's flowing kind of west to east into assembly, where this, you know, the assembly was set up over there, and then shrink wrapping, finishing, and, and, and shipping. Okay. This will again move over into building three once the construction is settled and all that. Okay. But we had to move it out of the way so we moved it back here. So you've got a little bit of your pressing, then it comes here to get yep. assembled, and then it goes there to, to shrink wrap it. Now, let's, did, let's walk over here and I, where we can hear and I can explain okay. a little bit. Did you buy the presses from Rainbow? Yeah, I bought, I bought Rainbow, uh, Bill Smith Custom Records, right. uh, Microwatt in Milan and Alpha wow. Records in uh, Florida. Wow. So I've done a lot of shopping. On the yeah, right and, and so the, the, the presses that that, uh, that Rainbow used were like the Lennon presses. They are. They're these two rows here. Where you see 35, 31, 30, that's all the Rainbow. Do you know the story of Len Ed, that whole story? It was, yes, it was I know published, it all. It's an amazing story. It was published in a, in a magazine. Yeah, it, it, Steve Sheldon's yeah. wife's father. Right. Lenny Palmer. Right. And Ed somebody. It's an amazing story. It was, it was in a literary magazine in Europe a couple of years ago. Oh, I've never seen that. Oh, I'll send, i got to wow. find it, but I'll, it's a fantastic story. I, I'd love to see it. you got to see it. Steve great. gave me the original patent on the, on the Lenin yeah, presses, yeah, yeah. and, and it, it's wonderful. So... <laughs> we, we were, for a long time, we were a collection of SMT presses and Lennon presses. Yeah. We gravitated more toward the Lennons and we liked those. When we moved in here, we had more capacity for more presses. And so we were trying to run a lot of SMTs and a lot of Lennons. Yeah. And then when we bought Rainbow, that obviously brought us another 16 plus 
uh, Lennon presses. So we moved the SMTs out except for the seven inch and 10 inch records. Yeah. So we still continue to press on SMTs. But today we have 36 Lennon presses. Wow. 34, 34 I, I Lennon I brought presses. the story to uh, to Maiden Vinyl in Detroit. I brought the, you know, the paperwork and I went to a Kinko's. I was going to print it out so everybody there could have it. And they wouldn't print it because of copyright concerns. No. I swear to God. And it was not even, it wasn't an issue. But they, but they made it an issue. Well, I, I have, I, I'm sure, the largest collection of Leonard presses in the world. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, in Poland at a press Would you rather have a better picture? Oh, yeah. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. I, was at a, I was in Poland at a small pressing plant, yeah. and they were Leonard presses there. Oh, really? Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, every now and then I'll get a call, typically from Europe, uh, where somebody has some Lennon presses, they wonder if I want to buy them, which yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind of done buying old presses. Yeah, uh, I think you're good. <laughs> yeah, you're good for I'm, a while. I'm good. Uh, and I'll show you, we're actually doing some things to modernize the Lennon presses. So this is yeah. what you're going to see here, you're going to see that gated area around those uh, Bank of Six presses. And we also do high security for some of our customers. Inside that high security area, we even have security guards and whatnot. Uh, all of the trash and scrap and everything is collected and stored. And then after it's uh, frequently, we can, we can take that and scrap it. But uh, that's a high security area. And that's be behind that. Wow. Yeah, yeah you're okay. So when a Dell got pressed, you had security guards up there? Yes. Yeah, we did. And then we also had a monitor who access who did it. Uh, we followed through the process of the county and uh, wow. we had it, anyone was in there that had that badge access and so on. What was it that you were worried about? What were they worried about? It's okay, more the artwork. Really, I got you. Yeah, it's the artwork because um, the obviously, artwork. well, even, well, I mean, I no one the day day for the day. Alicia said yesterday, really, they're more interested in the artwork because obviously there's no encryption algorithms on vinyl right. and they're really more worried about the artwork component more so. Yeah, I was wondering. Yeah, so these are the same thing. Like, you know, everyone presses. So there are 37 presses in this room? No. We got 40, 40 presses in this room. 41. Wow. Seven plus. Or six plus, yeah. Anyway, that's all good. Yeah, 40. 40. Yeah. 40 we have room 40, for more. <laughs> yeah, we have 40 presses in this room. Uh, we have uh, 30, 30, the, the configuration is 34 Lennets and 6 SMTs. We have temporarily moved four of the Lennets out so we could set up and start running the new Phoenix presses while we were building out the new infrastructure ah. for the, the new Phoenix area. We will soon move those over to the new Phoenix area, move the Lennets back, and then we'll, we'll operate 40 traditional presses here, 34 Lennets and six SMTs, and then in the other room we'll have 48 Phoenix Alpha presses. I think it would be interesting to take, this, take a stamper and, and press it on the different presses and see how different they sound. Yeah. We actually could do that between, we actually could do that because the molds were, were there's uh, some improvements we're doing to the linens and the molds and so on that would allow us maybe to do that. You know, some people say the SMTs because they're big and heavy and they do, when they stamp, when that thing stamps down the whole room shakes. Well, the, the linens the big one. That, yeah, that's, that's the mother, even bigger, well, that's yeah. That's the big tank. And, yeah, and, and, and you know, SMTs. Old. Either of those, they say, you know, the old, those old things have more womp to them than the, the yeah. ones that Optimal uses or the I one, know. you know, that, the Phoenix, and, and the Phoenix Alpha story is, I don't know whether you know this, but I got an email from somebody in Japan, it was at least 10 years ago, it could have been longer, and he said he ha they have a small pressing plant and they have a few of these uh, Tulex Alphas, and they need parts, do I know anybody? And somehow I found the, the, son, the, the son of the guy that either founded the company or was the engineer who designed the blueprints of it, somehow I was able to get a hold of him, and he said, I have parts in a storage locker for, for my father, wow. but I can't give you the blueprints because it's hand, you know, it's drawn blueprints. There's not, nothing digital about it. And somehow he was, he was able to get the parts that he needed from this guy. And then the guy decided maybe we should make a new press and get back into the business. And so he built the one and, and it was set up someplace. And everybody said, oh, sure, you can build one. He's not going to, it's never going to happen. All these naysayers. And now look at it. Yeah, yeah. It's so fantastic. Yeah. I, I remember the first Making Vinyl where the, the, the guys from Phoenix, you know, talked a little bit about what they were doing. And yeah. It was a very sort of dry engineering driven. Right. And we're going to do this right every Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what do you know? They make yeah. wonderful Just presses. like Piper Payne, I'm opening a press lid. Okay, sure, sweetie. <laughs> and the same with the, the woman in, in Texas. Yeah. And, yeah, you're opening a press. Sure. We're going to go into the dry finish, yeah, yeah. and okay. so this will have access into dry finish only secured like Mark has. Okay. Uh, 
Um, so, you know, here we're on our pressing floor. I, I told you the configuration. So we pulled out four of the linens so we could get these running sooner. We received these probably late Q4 of last year. Four. So four. Have, there's four of them here. You'll see a whole bunch more over there. But we wanted to set them up here and, and, and really learn on them and, yeah. and, and get our people trained and all that. So we've been running these for a few months now. Are these actually making records that you sell yet? Or oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. We, how make, long we make wonderful records. How long did it take to get, get them working so that the records are coming out and we're ready to roll? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, it, it's, it's a learning curve, right? And, and so, you know, the good news is we had all the infrastructure here. All we had to do was, you know, connect it right. and then learn how to use the presses and, and you know, the debugging that's the function of their manufacturing and, and our own education. So, yep. well, you know, a couple of months before I'd say I felt good about what they were doing. I mean, we were making records, you know, after probably, you know, three or four weeks, but... You know, the, the, the productivity and the consistency wasn't where you wanted it. After, you know, 10 weeks or so, you said, hey, this is good. After 12 weeks, you said, this is great. Yep. Um, uh, very uh, good. Very and good. I, think, I think that learning curve is going to collapse as we, as we bring up more and more. These yep. are our first four. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so these were, like Mark said, installed in December. Um, we were using these to start training and to start getting our operators proficient as they come in. Um, the four that we had sitting here linted, you're going to see those in the expansion room. Uh, in the expansion room, we're also going to use that for rebuilding and refurbishing all of the old linens. Um, I know Mark mentioned too some of the stuff we're doing. We're, we're adding PLC control. Yeah, and and so we're um, retrofitting them with solid state relays, bringing them into today's world. And uh, yeah, we've got four of them here too that we've already done that with. It's great to have uh, the same record press that all the different kind of press you have here. Blind. I think well, we should try that. Right, 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 wanna, right now, he doesn't need another project. Right. <laughs> if, one day, if you one day. Together on that, I'll be one happy One day, to. and a blind test. Yeah, yeah that's and what then, I like. And then what I do is I, I digitize these things at 9624 on my turntable, and I put them on my website or on, on YouTube and let people hear. So yeah. they can either dispel their their myth-making, or they, maybe they'll hear, you know, yeah. who knows. So I've done that a lot over the years. Uh, we had some... Uh, really nice audio if you see this in Sony. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to do that, I'm, I'm game. I think it would be great. It would be okay. really interesting. Not, no. Not Second. D4, 25, 6, 7, and 8. Is that, the, is that the Friday afternoon beer keg on the back That's of that? Right. Yeah. You can look over, well, if you, know, if you look over there under press 9, you'll see a traditional control panel, right, where you'll see some, some numbers on top. You see a lot of knobs and dials. Right. All the timers and relays. If you open it up, you're going to have kind of a rat's nest of wires. Sure. That ultimately is what you know, drives the press. Right. Now you're going to see in a second what we've done to rebuild it and to renew uh, the Lennon press with modern technology, you know, but using the, the core mechanics of what Lennon had built. So all of those timers and relays, they have to be constantly rebuilt over and over and over and over yeah, again. Sure. So what we've done instead is we went to uh, new solenoids that you can get, uh, valves that are readily available, uh, viewing machine interfaces, or like a touchscreen panel, um, everything solid state relays, PLC control, heater bands on the extruders, oh. um, so that we can control the temperatures and so on. Very and how did that you use... it as a, a, a steam jacket on the computer? Oh, and, 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 and so this is a control. lot better. Yeah, better, you see more easy control, you see burst plugs along that line, you see you know, yeah. uh, zones to monitor uh, and control temperature and zones. Um, and uh, if, we, if we had our feet open, that you'd see, you know, Yeah, I'm trying to look for a... I, I once had, like, this dream where instead of all the steam, you you use a microwave oven, a microwave shot to zap the vinyl and melt it, get it on there, and, and save all the... All yeah. the uh, Extruder stuff. But well, I mean, you got to think about it too. You can get uh, um, EBC to start to melt, but they're extracting eight to nine thousand pounds per square inch of pressure. Yeah. And then once you start getting all that pressure, it wants to increase the heat on its own, so then you got to start bringing the temperature down. Right. So oh. you got to get really control the both ways. Oh. Yeah. You get it started, and you got to kind of slow it down. Right. It's like it's like roasting coffee. Yeah. I roast my own coffee, and if you let it go too far, it, once it starts first crack. It starts heating on its own and it fills up. I thought you were going to say a still in the backyard. Blind, you got to do the same thing. No, with coffee, that. just coffee. That's, that's enough. I had one fire and I don't want another fire. So we've got four presses that we've got retrofitted new barrels, new screws, um, mechanical parts, everything that we can. Um, we've got four more that are offline and they're in the expansion room, which you're going to see. They'll come back and then replace the Phoenixes over there. Okay. Then we've got three SMTs that were originally set up for seven inch. 
we just converted this one to 10 inch, so it's got some 10 inch product we ran today. And then we've got a couple that do 10 inch and then 12 inch, and we're bringing this one back to life. Rewiring everything, new panels, wow. and so on. And this is an SMT? SMT. And we're just so, this, with this here all the time? Or is um, so at the old plant, Mark had several SMTs as well as Linens, and uh, these are the ones that he had had over the last Wow. So this one's being refurbished and rebuilt. Um, you can see all the new mounts, all the electronics. Yep. I think it'd be fun to be here when they fire one of these things up for the first time. It's like, oh, a, yeah. it's like an old so steam like engine. Said, we run all these for like constant, but the operator that runs these, we only, we only run these Monday through Friday, and uh, right now we're running a lot of 10 inch, and so she's doing the 10 inch plus a lot of test presses. How much 10 inch business is this? Okay. Again, uh, we still have for these presses, or you know, uh, we still have several weeks yeah. of uh, yeah. work on both 7 and 10. Like in September, this was one big boneyard. It was just full of uh, stuff. Yeah. Um, this is, this is you see. You're, you're going to ignore the lineage. But the lineage you see here, I'm going to be putting them in this bank of four right here. And this is where we're going to start refurbishing them over and over. And where did, did these come from? They uh, came from where um, the Phoenix and Billy Q are sitting. Okay. So those but, but four these are, are these. old rainbow presses. This, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, those four were what we're sitting over in position 29 to 32. Who's actually running it at, at the rainbow? Oh, yes. Yeah. Wow. And, and so we're going to strip with that. really decrepit, huh? Yes. Yeah. We're going to spin the rainbow? No. Okay. Yeah, they were really tightly compacted. Yeah, yeah. We're wow. going to strip them down, we're going to refurbish them, and then put the PLC controls, the new heaters, sure. and, and so on. Wow. And we've got enough to do them right now. So, so. so over the last year, yeah, it, yeah, as Matt said, this was a boneyard, right? And it, so we cleared it all out. You know, Matt working together with the other, uh, the engineers designed and, and, and built this. You'll see in a, in a moment the uh, uh, our secondary boiler room with all the boiler and air compressor and cooling capacity. Uh, put in the trenches, all of the underground, all stainless steel piping. Uh, so we have water and compressed air in all the trenches, and then all the, uh, see all the white uh, wrap pipe is all the high pressure steam. Sure. Brought in all the electric, and so this was all designed and built uh, in less than a 12 month period. Wow. Uh, which how many months did you say? Less than a 12, right? I mean, well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and how, uh, do you have inspectors that have to come in every step of the way? Do they I'm really, so sorry. inspectors from the city or from the municipality? We, we, yes, yeah, so um, obviously you've got all the EPA regulations and all the right, stuff for the right. weight, or especially on the nickel waste stream of yep. plating. Um, here, obviously, when we build this out, uh, you've got seven different inspections that have to happen between fire and water and and building and permits and codes. It's, it's, a, it's a tough process. So this is the place that was all designed you know, for the Phoenix Alpha. You see templates of uh, how the presses uh, are meant to sit and that we use as we, as we place them. But wow. we, we, can, we can connect the press in you know, 24, 48 hours. Are all the Phoenix Alpha presses here now? No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> no otherwise, otherwise, everything you'd see would be Phoenix Alpha press right now. Uh, we have 48 of them coming. Wow. We have 16 in the building. There are four on the ocean right now, and they'll continue to ship you know, two to four a month uh, going forward. And the objective is 48 by the end of the year. It'll wow. probably leak into uh, you know, Q1 of next year. Wow. But like, like Mark said, power's already ran. Utilities are there. We just drop them. Um, these just arrived. We can get them uncrated. This is what we've done. Set in place. Uh, we can get them aligned and connected. Uh, right now we're qualifying out a few more things, but these will be up and running by the next week. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. That is exciting. So we've got to use road plates. Uh, those presses are very, very heavy. To get them they're about four to 5,000 pounds each just on the press side, so they're extremely wow. very heavy. So those were the ones we just received. They're construction right now, being built, but these presses are all operational. That's great. Very exciting. Doing some right now, um, Phoenix is back. We're doing some maintenance on them. We're checking some alignments after they run for a little bit. We'll make sure everything's perfect. Yep. Um, and then we, uh, we start running again. One of the things that we have, uh, this used to be our exterior wall. And we had to expand behind the building to facilitate the, the cooling water, the steam, the compressed air, everything that's required for this. So we built another um, mechanical room behind us. And then we've got some controls in here too. Everything again, temperature, humidity control. Uh, we can control the cooling water within a degree, a steam pressure, everything. So wow, that's, that's fantastic. This is really cool. Controls for cooling water. That's called this I like 
I mentioned to you, let me show you one quick thing. We talked about the tripping. So like I said, I've got everything coming between the extruder and the hydraulics. There's no reason to be working back here. Right. Uh, the work area is essentially from here, so you got the articulating, all the way to the other side. This is the work area. So again, no trip. You yep. saw the other ones are coming to the front difference. Yeah. It's just much nicer, better design. Oh, yeah. We can, we can train you how to run one. Well, so, oh yeah. Okay. You know that would that would be really fun. I actually I actually pressed a record in at GZ, and it was a hand press yeah. where you have to stick it in, and then it's gonna do that by itself. Yeah, and it scared right the there. shit out of me. I had a, I like I pressed an Elton John <laughs> record. I haven't, I haven't played it yet though. So maybe when we do this line study, we actually have you press. Oh, yeah. This used to be the exterior, and then th these were railroad tracks. Oh. Uh, up until like September, October of last year. Right now we're doing a blowdown and stuff on the surge tank. The surge tank is where all the condensate return goes, and then that surge tank then goes to a DA. The DA then feeds all of the boilers. We've got two brand new boilers, and then we've got two of the old boilers that feed uh, building two. We also uh, have some redundancy where all of these boilers can feed to either room, and even the cooling water can feed to either room where we can segregate. So this used to be, like I said, a uh, railroad. railroad track, and we had only so much easement that we could work with, so we had to make it long and skinny. The layout actually works very nicely, um, but again, it used to be railroad tracks. And who designed all, the, all these shit? You had an architect come in, an architect, you did it. He, he did 99% of it. Wow, that's great. Uh, where we were in that room, all of this piping was essentially under the trench. So if you take those pipes and you go up maybe a block or so, that's where the floor level is in that building. I see. And so in here we've got the cooling water that's returning to the hot tank, uh, and then it goes to the cooling towers themselves, then back to the cold tank, and then to the process area. So it's on a constant loop. Same with the steam. The steam goes, it's on a big loop, and then the condensate comes back and goes to the surge tank I talked about on the far end. So uh, we reuse it as much of the heat that we, uh, we put into that steam that we can. Yeah. Uh, that's a nice little pretty lap pool. About 80, 80 degrees. That's nice and cool. Yeah, and considering outside, right, it's so hot, uh, we're doing a good job of keeping that you know, yeah. nice and cool. I think you can turn this into a koi pond. You can have a little fish <laughs> <pond>. <laughs> That's right. They, they didn't poop it, it'd be okay. Yeah, exactly. So we've got the hot tank, this is the cold tank. Um, and again, they're, uh, you know, we're pumping about 1,600 gallons a minute. So these are big pumps, one of the pumps. No kidding. They're all on variable free controls. They're monitoring the temperature. Based on temperature, they'll speed up, slow down, do what they've got to do. So everything's right. fully automated. Really impressive. So these are the cooling towers for, for building three for the new heat express since there's two identical cooling towers in front of the building that serve building two and all the leaded and SMT. But, but if we wanted to, like I said, we've got some um, capabilities where I could send this cooling water to building two. Every, well, everything. A lot of redundancy, a lot of, yeah. So everything we've designed to accommodate about 100 buildings. So the way we look at it, you obviously customers include regulatory, EPA, whatever, right. but our customers are also our employees. Yeah, and, and, and they'd rather be here than standing outside. Yeah. That's right. We want to be a great place to work um, and, and be a great partner to our customer. Yep. Customers are the customers, again, like I said, we yep. be great partners to our customers, which are our employees. Yep. Um, we've got three finishing lines in right now. The third one came from Rainbow. We've got a fourth one from Rainbow that we'll be installing soon. Um, we don't have to run 24-7 operation yet on the finishing side, uh, but very soon as the um, pressing plant comes up and we start doing more and more, um, then we'll start to run more 24-7. Is the pressing plant running 24-7? 24-6. Yeah, 24-6. Wow. 24-6. Oh. And maybe more sooner. <laughs> so right now we're at shift change in here. Um, so like we mentioned, building one is all the receipts and all the store components. Yep. Building two and then into building three now is where we're making it. Assemble, we're finishing it out, and then this is the shipping. Okay. So we've got five, you know, four shipping docks here. In all likelihood, we will, we'll, in certain, in all certainty, we'll move that uh, assembly operation over here. We'll either move the shrink wrap lines down so it goes pressing, assembly, shrink wrap, and chip, or we'll, we'll move it over here, depending on Got you. And some raw material storage, but a lot of this is stuff that we don't use every day. Is that all PVC? But yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Color. The scale here is unbelievable. I've been to a lot of places. It is. It's, uh, 
I mean, GC is big too, but this is the way that the efficiency of how you set this up is really impressive. This is a completely separate, this is our wholesale distribution business. We have a separate line of business called URP Music Distributors. They're a one-stop wholesaler, so they're selling to record stores uh, you know, around the country, around the world. And they're basically buying from our customers, our pressing customers, oh. and selling. So it's a small, Mostly small niche business. This is kind of like a one one stop yeah, in the old that's days. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. It, is it is a one stop. So you have to be old to remember all that shit, right? <laughs> one stops. And then yeah. what we also do we in here too, because we got you know video cameras everywhere, we also yeah. security is very important to sure. us. Uh, we can set this up too for high security assembly. So when we're running high security product, we'll cage this off. This will be the high security assembly, and then. Because these are three buildings, we've got the umbilical between the two. We have overhead doors we shut. We lock and guard this off, and then that product is running on that finishing line, nothing else. And then it gets black wrapped and so on, and then it gets secured, and then so no one's in here while we're doing high security. Wow, yeah, that's great. And there's one going. last area we can show you. Okay. So um, every product that comes through, we're 100% digital inspection. Um, the records go into sleeves. Remember, we talked about the inspection. The yep. Then we've got a quality assurance, quality control group that goes around, um, and they're checking. You know, every 50 records, they're checking to make sure the sound. They're checking to make sure the components and artwork and everything's correct. Um, and then we've got some QC booths and so on. Now, as we build out over here, uh, we will be building additional QC booths and so on uh, to accommodate that. Your point about the scale that you made a moment ago, yeah. I, I think it's a really important one. And, and, and you know, we sort of touched on it in the panel today, but yeah. I don't think people appreciate, you say, okay, I'm going to grow. And it's, it's so much more than saying, I'm just going to add some more. Right, exactly. Uh, obviously, you know, you've got you know, lots of infrastructure to support the presses, but yeah. all the support areas and more broadly your whole vendor network. And then you get into the systems. So how do you craft thousands and thousands of open orders? Yeah. And, and, and how do you, you know, prioritize and who's the job and this stuff? It's really a lot to manage. And, no uh, kidding. You know, I can't tell you how many nights I laid awake beating myself up, you know, saying, what did I do? You know, <laughs> especially, you know, in the early days of coming here. Yeah. You know, it, it, it was, sure. you know, it's no secret. It was really, really hard. He um, never sleeps. I, get I come it. in early. And yeah. then he never sleeps, so yeah. it's always I, very late. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Believe me. No, it, it's just, you know, and, 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 but it, it, you, know, you, you can't help yourself. It's like, you, I really, I mean, you know, you and I have been talking for 15 years. Yeah, the stuff I starts. I want to build it great, right? And it's just, yeah. you, you know, the stuff starts careful what you wish for. So what we're doing in here. <laughs> exactly. This is kind of the old, and obviously we don't have to do it as much yeah. with the new stampers and, and right. so on the punch. But they're checking concentracy, they're checking run out and so on to make right. sure um, you know, we're within spec. Yeah. So we've got a couple of um, graphical scales, the scopes, and so on. Um, yeah. Obviously done manual. It would be nice if we did have the laser-based systems yep. eventually. Um, They're coming. More, more things to come when it comes yeah. to that. And then we've got you know, all the audio booths and so on. So He's got to listen to listen. records? Yeah, that's what they do. I understand yeah, that on. you have to listen to these records and you hate music. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> the guy with the Doors t-shirt hates it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, an yeah. affectation. I, I, I know a lot of music haters who have Doors t-shirts. So. Yeah. Is it fun? It is. Yeah. It's nice. He's smiling and he's at the end of the shift. So I can awesome. tell. He's, he's smiling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, yeah. All right. Good. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's enjoying. Thank I can you, tell. Sandy.